Hello everyone. I want to do something a little bit different today. I want to um, do an altered jigsaw puzzle piece. Um, I've done a couple of these in the past and I'll show you the other two in a second. Um, now this is a floor puzzle piece from a kid's jigsaw puzzle box. I got mine on clearance in TK Maxx but you can pick these up really cheaply from um, your thrift stores. Um, and for those of you that think I have gone stark raving mad, let me show you the other two that um, I have made. Um, this one here I made a few years ago using some of the Art by Marlene products. Um, I used one of her background paper packs and some of her die cuts and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I don't know whether you can see the dimension and texture that's going on here um, but it's just so pretty and you can see that I've created um, a hanging mechanism so I keep this on my craft room wall and it just you know gives me so much um, inspiration and of course who doesn't love a dangle? So that was the first one I made. I also made this one here a couple of years ago. This is just as beautiful as well. Um, again, it's got the same kind of hanging mechanism, um, bags of dimension and texture, just like the previous one, and a little key charm. So I want to add number three to my collection a little bit of prep with these because they've got um, a very glossy um, surface. I'm going to use um, a sanding block and I'm just going to take the shiny surface off my jigsaw puzzle piece um, just to make the paper that I add to it in a second um, stick properly. Um, otherwise, you know, with this glossy surface, things don't stick down very, very well. So you only need a light sanding. I'm doing mine on a piece of parchment paper, as you can see, just to catch um, the dust. So I'm just going to brush um, the excess dust off and um, choose some paper to use for um, to, to add to my jigsaw puzzle piece. I continued sanding my jigsaw puzzle piece and I've paid particular attention to the edges because I want to glue my background paper down now. Now I'm doing this piece um, for the wildlife animals prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. And seeing as we've got Easter in a couple of weeks, I want mine to have a spring stroke um, Easter vibe. So this is the paper that um, I've chosen to glue down. This is from the MNC Boutique Design Block Pack. I got it from the works here in the UK for £3. It's an old one. It's um, probably five or six years old. I don't think um, they have it anymore. Now I'm going to start off by applying a good layer of glue stick, playing uh, paying particular attention to the edges. And then I'm also going to um, apply um, some of my art glitter glue as well to the edges just to help it stick down um, even even further. I've said this before, I just find that using glue stick just gives me um, a really good finish without any buckling. And then the art glitter glue around the edge just make sure, make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. So just making sure that I've got that all over my puzzle piece. And then we'll just apply some of the art glitter glue just just around the, the edge. Yes, I can smooth it out with my finger as well just to make sure that I'm as close to the edge as I can possibly get. Let me just do this. Now is there, I'm gonna glue it this way round and then I'm just going to trim, trim around the, the edges. In fact, I might as well have that as close to the edge as I can, can get it. And then I'm just going to trim this um, a little bit just so that it's easier for me to cut. And then the fussy cutting begins. And I'll show you how I'm going to go about this because of course this is um, an awkward shape. I just want to weight that down underneath a heavy book for a second or two, just to make sure that um, that, that glue has grabbed. Okay, so that's glued down now. So I'm just going to go around the easy edges as best as I as I can like this. And then I'm going to get into the awkward nooks and crannies using my, my nail scissors. So we'll just cut here as best as I can and I'll show you a really easy way to get the, the rest off for anybody who's interested um, in trying one of these. So in with my nail scissors, let's try and get in here and it is a bit fiddly but um, it is more than doable so here we are we'll just um, get these bits off here you can see that's not too bad but we have got some um, rough bits um, around the edges I am just going to take my emery board I'm going to do it from this side here and I'm just going to file the rest away and it comes off really easily. I'm going to go off camera now and do this over my bin just so that I can catch all of the mess. Here we 
are. You can see that I've gone around all of the edges and into the nooks and crannies with my emery board and that looks nice and neat. I do want to ink around the edges of this just to give it um, a vintage vibe. With the other two, I'd gone around with um, black distress ink, um, but this one is um, more vintagey, so I'm just going to use frayed, frayed burlap for this. I don't want to um, cover up that cardboard on the side as well, so I'm making sure that I've got plenty of ink there as well. Now, of course, we've got these awkward bits that are going to be a bit tricky to get into. Um, I've decided to pull out my one of my makeup brushes and let's see if we can use that just to get into the awkward areas. Is this working? Yeah, you see that's doing the job um, just fine. You could even use um, a, a Q-tip, something like like that but I'm just going to ink um, around the edges and as soon as I've done that I'll be straight back. This is what my puzzle piece looks like um, now that I've inked all around the edges so all nice and neat you can see that the sides um, are all uniform now as well and as far as the focal image is concerned I want to use this tilde teacup and um, rabbit design. Now I know that you will not be able to get hold of this um, so you know there won't be any links or anything below it's an old tilde design I mean whether you'll be able to pick one up um, on Etsy or, or eBay I don't know. Um, I've used one of the smaller versions of these in the past when I did um, an artist trading card or altered playing card um, I, I think. Now what I want to do is be able to slot my bunny inside the teacup so I am just going to use my craft knife just to carefully cut along the rim of the um, teacup. Now be careful about doing this Nina. Here we are just um, far enough along so that my rabbit will pop inside hopefully um, that will be enough let's have a look if not i can yeah you see that's absolutely perfect and now my rabbit um, fits inside the teacup what i do want to do before i glue anything down is just go around the edges and um, just ink up so again in with the frayed burlap distress ink inked around the edges of my piece i've even inked around the rim as well i've just gone in with my makeup brush and so I just need to um, stick this down. Now, I want to make sure that the ears of my bunny um, are in the centre of this um, piece, just because they're quite fragile and, you know, they're likely to get battered um, if not. So let's have a look and see how I want this um, to go. Um, now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to add a tiny amount of glue just um, inside here, um, just to hold it um, in place. Let's have a look. Let's start piecing um, this together. Now, of course, we've got the saucer hanging off the right hand edge of the um, jigsaw puzzle piece. So to balance that out, there are a couple of other die cuts that came um, with this set. And I am thinking that I can have one of these flowers here like this. I also want one of the roses to cover up um, the star just because um, that just isn't really working um, for me. Um, I like how that looks. Um, but but I, in fact, actually, I think I want it um, a bit lower, lower down like this, but I want to cover up that piece of the star as well. So what I'm going to do is just fussy cut um, this leaf out here from, from this rose. And then we can use this just to fill in that, um, that gap. Keep the rose intact as well, because we can um, use that in another project. So let me just see if I can get that out. I'm going to need to ink around the edges of these um, as well. But I think that if I have that um, like that, that will work quite well. Where's my leaf gone? Oh, these are pinging around all over, all over the place. But something like that, isn't that pretty? Start piecing this together. I'd quite like this flower arrangement here in the bottom left hand corner, my rabbit um, here. So I'm just going to start off by gluing this down first. Um, let's just add some glue glue here to start off with. Grab my rabbit so that I know roughly where I want this to go. I think that will be that will be fine there like that. 
don't overthink it Nina just for goodness sakes um, stick it down that's cool um, I don't want it um, overhanging too much because you know then it bends and gets raggedy um, you can see as well I forgot to show you I've um, inked um, around the edges um, inked on the back of these as well um, I will do something with the back of the jigsaw puzzle piece as well but um, you know those are inked in distress ink in frayed burlap and then of course I can add my rabbit now do I want to pop this up on dimensional tape or not I don't think I do I think I've got some um, another idea for that so let's just add glue all around the outside not too far along the edges because of course that's going to um, hang off so let's um, stick this down as well. Me being me, I've just been faffing around with this for absolutely ages, but I have found the perfect um, embellishment. I'm ditching the two um, that I had earlier and I found this dimensional one and I am just going to pop this down here like this. It needs um, a touch more glue um, just because I never find that um, these dimensional stickers um, hold particularly well. So we'll pop that down there just to cover cover that star so found another dimensional piece which i think will look fabulous as a garland in her hair so i'm just going to add another dab of glue there just to make sure that that's not going anywhere and that can go on there like that isn't that just so pretty and then I think I just need to add my hanging um, mechanism and perhaps a charm as well so let me just go and see what I can find I think this looks adorably cute now my other two pieces have got um, a hanging mechanism and I've just made this using a piece of jewelry wire and I'm just going to show you how I did this now of course if you don't want to use wire and you don't have jewelry tools it doesn't matter um, use whatever you have use a piece of Ribbon to hang yours if you want to make something similar. Now I'm just going to use um, a paintbrush here as a mandrel and what I'm going to do is centralise this piece of wire. This wire is about three and a half inches and I am just going to wrap that around just to give me that, um, that circular shape just like this. So that's what we've um, got so far. Um, and then what I will do is use my round nose pliers just to create myself a spiral. So I'm going to um, wrap that around um, in an outward direction. I'm then going to bring in my flat nose pliers and just create a spiral just on one side. And then I want to thread um, some beads as well. So I'm just going to wrap this round a few times just like just like this that should that should do fine um, how many times did I wrap it um, on the others yeah that's um that's very similar um I'm just going to go and grab myself some seed beads and then we can thread um, a few of these um, onto the top I've just grabbed myself a few seed beads and I'm going to thread um, a few of these on. I, th I think um, there are between 14 and 16 on the other two. I'm just going to try 14 to start um, off with. Um, this one here is going to have to be a bit narrower than the other one just because um, I've chosen to use this piece here. And so I've got um, a smaller space, as you can see, to glue, glue my um, little hanger onto. So I'm just going to thread a few of these on. I've threaded 14 um, seed beads onto this. And again, I'm just going to wrap the other piece of wire on the other side around into a spiral as well. So we've got um, our loop, bringing in my flat nose pliers and just using this to bring that wire round into a spiral like this. As I've said, you know, just use lace or ribbon as a hanging mechanism if you don't want to do this. I just um, love this this look and I've got um, hundreds of bees, uh, beads in my bead stash as well from my jewellery making days. So, you know, at the end of the day, use what you have. Now, I don't want to wrap this too tightly because I do want um, a little gap in the middle so that I can hang it um, onto my wall. And I'm just going to bring this um, round as well, just so that I can glue it um, onto the back 
here like like this. Before I glue my little hanging mechanism down, I want to paint the back of my jigsaw puzzle piece. I've sanded it down um, using my sanding block, the same sanding block you, use, uh, you saw me use at the beginning. I've also added a coat of clear gesso as well. And I am going to be using some of this metallic luster paint. This is Cosmic um, Shimmer. I think colour-wise it goes absolutely beautifully. So I'm just going to squirt some out onto this piece of of, um, parchment paper and then I'm just going to add a layer of paint um, the gesso will just prime it and just make it um, apply much more evenly because of course the jigsaw puzzle piece is quite shiny so you really do need to sand it down um, you don't have to do this I mean at the end of the day um, I'm hanging mine on my wall but I know that it will bug me knowing that the back is unfinished it's just me it's just you know OCD or whatever it is I don't know ultimate perfectionism which is just crazy, crazy, crazy. You do not need to do this, but um, but I do. <laughs> so I'm just going to give this a couple of coats of paint. I've given the back of my jigsaw puzzle piece two coats of paint. It matches beautifully with the other side, so I'm really happy with this. And now I'm ready to glue on my hanging mechanism. It needs to go that way round. Um, okay, I'm going to use some E6000. You need something strong to glue this. Um, glossy accents or something like that would work really well as well. Um, so I've just put um, a small amount of E6000 down onto a piece of parchment paper. Um, how did that want to go? So that needs to go that way round. And you'll find that when you're gluing this on, um, that you'll um, discover which way round it automatically wants to go all on its own. And so I'm just applying a small amount of glue. You don't need um, too much. This stuff is really, really strong. Um, tiny bit more just because I've got um, a bit of a globby there. So let's stick a bit more down. This is E6000 Plus, and I'm really not sure what the difference is between um, E6000 Plus and E6000. I think it's something to do with the, the fumes. And so I am going to stick this on here like, like this, get it centralised, and then I'm just going to hold it um, in place with a couple of clips like this. These clips are just absolutely brilliant. These are uh, clips for, for using for dressmaking, um, I think, but they're just so, so handy. And so I'll leave that to um, stick down for um, a few minutes. As I'm waiting for the glue to dry on my little hanger, I'm just going to add a charm to the bottom here. I've got my cropper dial and I've chosen the smallest punch. I'm just going to punch a hole here. Let's try and get this um, centralised, not too far away from the edge either, just because I want to um, pop a jump ring through. I've got um, a jump ring here, so I'm just going to open open this up. Here we are, just like, just like this. Now I've got um, a couple of charm options. I've got this flower here, which I think is really pretty. I've got a teacup as well, very Alice in Wonderland. And I've also got um, a tassel, which would work really well. Oh my goodness me, I think for me, I like the flower. So that's what um, I'm going to add. So I'm just going to thread, thread that on, wrong way round. And then I'm just going to pop my in fact that way that way around isn't it and i'm just going to tighten this up using my pliers here we are use the other ones as well these um, are heavy duty jump rings um, which are just absolutely brilliant but they are quite um, stiff um, to play around with I love that. That's just so cute. So I just need to wait now um, for the glue to dry. I'm thinking that I might add some um, Nouveau drops as well. Let me just go and grab some. To give my piece even more dimension, I'm just going to add some white um, Nouveau drops. Let me just um, squirt these out just to get rid of any air bubbles. And I'm just going to add some dots to my teacup here like, like this. just squirt these out again I haven't used these for a while but you can see that they're they're settling down 
I want um, one here as well, another one here, and where these dots are on the saucer as well. And that looks gorgeous. I love that. My jigsaw puzzle piece has been drying for about three to four hours and I just love it. It's just gorgeous. The Nouveau drops are now dry to the touch, although they're going to need a few more hours um, before they're cured properly. Let me just turn this um, on its side so that you can see that beautiful um, dimension. You can also see the dimension from the flowers as well if I turn it this way. Um, it's just beautiful. I love this piece. Bring back the other two pieces that I've made previously and I think this is a really nice addition to this collection. Of course, I'll leave the link to the video showing how I made these two here in the description box below, but I love this one here as well. All three of these jigsaw puzzle pieces are completely different, but the one thing that they have in common is texture and dimension, and I think that's what pulls them all together. So I think these are going to look absolutely wonderful as a collection on my wall. If anyone wants to follow along with this month's prompt, which is wildlife and Animals, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, in the description box below. So please do feel free to come along and join us. Um, but if you've enjoyed my video today, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. And in particular, let me know which one of these puzzle pieces is your favourite. But most importantly, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.